This is the Kaikoura Peninsula in New Zealand. There's a regular air freight run between Wellington and Christchurch with a return stop at Blenheim and then back to Wellington. Now along this deserted coastline fringed by the featureless expanse of the South Pacific, there were three detailed UFO sightings on one night. As you'll hear, the reports were made by professional pilots and backed up by ground observers. What's more, Wellington radar also tracked the objects. Then a film crew went up, and the pictures they brought back led to a government inquiry. The remarkable series of events began late on December the 20th, 1978, an apparently ordinary night at Wellington, New Zealand's busiest airport. Cargo planes were loading up for their routine runs, delivering freight to Christchurch, 200 miles away on South Island. The pilots were expecting a run-of-the-mill flight over the Pacific Ocean. Instead, they were about to embark on the strangest trip of their lives. The bizarre happenings began at the New Zealand RAF base in Blenheim, 70 miles from Wellington, just before midnight, as Warrant Officer Ian Uffendel, in charge of airport security, was finishing off his checks. I was doing my final rounds before retiring for the night, and driving up the tarmac, I noticed these lights, which I thought was a Bristol freighter. I stopped to watch the airplane approach and land, which it didn't do. This thing should have landed by now. Went up to the control tower and contacted the radar room in Wellington. Hi, oh, this is Blenheim Air Base. There's something strange up in the sky. At Wellington Airport that night, the phone call was answered by radar operator John Cordy. We've also got unidentified craft on the radar here. What's going on then? I just don't know. We established there was no aircraft approaching and realised then that what we were seeing was something that was a little bit out of the normal. They're on the move. We've got the same here. This is weird. They would describe a light that they could see that would be moving north over the hills beyond Blenheim and we would see coincidentally a target on our radar that was also moving north at the same time and made us think that perhaps these things were related to each other. What we were seeing was controlled movements and the large light was like a mothership controlling two satellites. It's spinning around now. Have you got any idea what it is? Sorry, Blenheim. They're as baffled as you. We were sure they were an aircraft because they were flying in too tight a pattern. And secondly, no aircraft had been notified to us as being airborne that night. They would had to have had a clearance from me to operate. I know what the sky is all about. I know an aeroplane when I see it. I know uh, a meteor when I see it. I know a star or a planet when I see it. And what we saw that night was none of those things. All efforts to identify the strange objects failed. And then the mystery deepened. Two planes were buzzed by UFOs in separate incidents on that same night. One of the aircraft was flying south over the Kaikoura Peninsula towards Christchurch. It was piloted by Captain Vern Powell and First Officer Ian Perry. Look here. We got company. There shouldn't be anything out there. Wellington Air Traffic Control, this is Argus ESAF. Can you confirm an aircraft in front of us? We can't make radio contact, but we've got a fix on the radar. We've been tracking them for three hours now. There's a glowing light just in front of us. Hard to say what range it is, but it's definitely airborne. There's nothing scheduled to be out there. What on earth is it then? Sorry, haven't got a clue. There with this large orb. We had no idea what it was, but just a light hanging in the sky. The effect on me was uh, prickling at the back of my neck. That soon ceased when I realised that we weren't being attacked at all, that it was just out there. The target tracked with him for 40 miles. In the same position that we saw the radar return, Vernon and his co-pilot saw a large white light which tracked along with them. It was now 4am. After trailing the plane, the object disappeared from view. The next shock came as the crew prepared to land at Christchurch. The system's ready for landing. Flaps 20 degrees. Switched in radar. What the hell was that? 
Up there. You notice the blip on our radar screen that went across from right to left very, very fast. Far quicker than an aircraft with very, very bright light and it was speaking across from right to left. God, look at the speed it's going. We figured that it must have been at least 15,000 kilometres an hour. The radar operators at Wellington Airport couldn't believe what they were seeing. We tried everything we could think of in playing with our radar controls to get rid of the target, to see if we could rationalise it, to sort it out. We couldn't. Something was happening, something unusual that I hadn't seen in my years as an air traffic controller. I'm a trained pilot, had been flying for very many years. We got to know what aircraft lights look like and what the lights of cities are like. And this light that we saw on that particular night is nothing like we've, I've ever seen before. But the most dramatic moment of the night came as another freighter flown by Keith Hine was buzzed by an unidentified object. Argosy SAE, this is an emergency call. The object is heading straight for you. Take avoiding action, now! I must confess I was a little uh, apprehensive at that stage as to uh, just what was going on and what its intentions were. And then that began to move back in towards us and at quite a rapid speed at one stage it was on an intercept course with us. Somehow a collision was avoided, but nothing could stop news of the night's events leaking out. A news crew led by reporter Quentin Fogarty flew in to okay. cover the story for Australian TV. I really thought all we'd be getting would be some footage of uh, pilots at the control, interiors of the aircraft, no more. But within minutes, the trip took an unexpected turn. Up here, quick! There seems to be something out there. Dave, are you getting this? I got it. When we got onto the flight deck, we saw the string of lights, three or four, sometimes as many as five lights. What do you think they are? I don't know. They definitely shouldn't be there. It started as a small pinpoint of light, and then they'd grow into this large pulsating globe with sort of tinges of red and orange and they would sort of keep that shape for a short time then we'd go right down again to a little pinpoint. This is amazing! I just sort of sat there transfixed and then I thought, hold on, I'm up here doing a job, I'm a journalist, so I started doing just a wild commentary onto tape. Myra, are you ready? And David was doing I'll his best to film. Dave, you stay on it, okay? The people in the aeroplane were seeing lights in the sky where the radar was reporting. There, there was the same correlation between radar target and uh, nocturnal light that was present on the previous occasion. The strange light show ended after 15 minutes, and soon after the plane touched down safely in Christchurch. The freight was unloaded, but the crew still had to face the return journey to Wellington. Quinton? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to let you down, but I, I don't want to go back on the return flight. What? I don't believe in little green men or spaceships or anything like that but that night there was something out there i know it's unprofessional but that's the way i feel i could understand that she didn't want to go back and i must admit that even i was a little bit apprehensive about getting back on but it was such a a unique opportunity and the rest of the film crew was in for another surprise shortly after takeoff i thought that whatever we'd seen wouldn't possibly be hanging around anymore but we'd that? just taken off and we were summoned to get up onto the flight deck. Quentin, what it was out there is back. There out to the starboard side was this great, great white bright light. That was the object that features mostly on the film and that was the one that uh, was analysed. We were told later it was about the size of a house. I had a very good view of it. Just a very bright light and it seemed to change shape. Every so many seconds on the film there was a red ring went round this object. Went As the plane was coming north, once again when it was in range of Wellington radar, there was correlation, good correlation between what the radar was seeing and telling the airplane was near them and what the airplane was seeing out the windows. What's going on? We're turning to face the thing. We want to find out a little bit more about it. Look, it's moving with us. It moved off to the starboard side again, so it appeared at that stage that it was under some form of control. Back down to Earth, the film report sent shock waves around the world and sparked a debate that continues to this day. 
Skeptics claim the images came from everyday objects on the ground, in the sky, or out at sea. It may well be that there are some unidentified lights on this film. I suspect that's probably the case. But equally, I suspect that the majority of the images on this film probably do have a conventional explanation of one kind or another. An investigation by the New Zealand authorities suggested the objects could have been fishing lights from squid boats, planets, or even moonlight reflecting off fields of cabbages. But all the witnesses are adamant none of these explanations add up. It certainly wasn't a, a squid boat. I never seen one on 13,000 feet up in the air anyway. Venus hadn't risen, so I don't know what it was. The air crew could have seen the light reflected from cabbages, but I've never known cabbages reflect on a radar screen before. And certainly, I'd like to know who was growing cabbages 20 miles out to the southeast of Wellington, well over the sea. I know what uh, Venus looks like, I know what planets look like and stars look like, and it was definitely none of those things. So what did all those witnesses see back in 1978? I wish I did know what I saw, but I've got no idea. I can only tell you I saw targets on my radar that I can't explain. I believe that, that the only logical explanation is that it didn't come from the planet Earth. They were unidentified flying objects. Things from outer space, I don't know. Does anyone? Look outside on a starry night, and if you say we're the only ones alive in this universe, I'll call you the biggest egotist ever.